I think called Long QT Syndrome. What does that mean? Long QT syndrome, uh, the QT interval is an interval that we measure on the electrocardiogram. Um, and in some patients, this interval can be prolonged. And if it is abnormally prolonged, it could put that person at risk for another type of fatal arrhythmia. Again, this is a condition um, where some people have inherited it from a family member, um, and screening with good questionnaire family history could be helpful. Uh, however, there may not be a family history. This condition is diagnosed on the EKG, and it's really the only way to effectively diagnose it. The QT interview, what is the hot use you're doing when you see that? Uh, it's repolarizing. It's um, uh, relaxing, uh, so to speak. So being prolonged, why does that put you at risk? What, uh, there's a phenomenon known as the R on T for not phenomenon, which basically means that you don't want the heart to be beating as it's relaxing. Um, typically that doesn't occur. However, if that relaxation period is prolonged, then the chances of that phenomenon occurring are increased. So it's up in an arrhythmia? Yes. It sets the patient up more likely for a fatal arrhythmia. What kind of an arrhythmia would you see in a cardiogram? If you it's, uh, the arrhythmia is something called torsade de point, which is a form of ventricular fibrillation, where the heart beats, the heart muscle beats com uh, extremely erratically and chaotically. And very fast? Extremely fast, extremely chaotic, and so much so that it is unable to effectively pump blood. How fast would be considered fast when you say fibrillation? Uh, over 200 beats per minute. So someone put your finger to someone's pulse, you would be going like a speaker. Correct, and, and, and even if someone were in ventricular fibrillation, they would be, uh, they lose consciousness very quickly, and it is even difficult to even feel the pulse. Will they have chest pain before they become unconscious? Uh, possibly not. And they might even know they just may feel like something uh, happening. In, in some instances, there's been dizziness, lightheadedness, um, but very brief. The symptoms usually occur, uh, and then the, the, the arrest occurs shortly thereafter. Uh, sometimes kids take these high caffeine drinks. Could that set these events off? Uh, it's, it's possible. Uh, in general, my feeling is these high caffeine drinks are not good for children. I, I, I wouldn't necessarily say that in the general population they're increasing your risk for sudden death, but certainly they're, they're not good for the heart. Um, they can increase the chances for other um, less dangerous but still important arrhythmias um, and should, should, for the most part, be avoided uh, in, in children. One of the side effects of these, these high caffeine drinks, kids get less sleep. Can that also be a factor? Uh, again, I think the caffeine drinks causing less sleep, um, poor hydration, palpitations, all of those things are, are, are really not very good for the child. And certainly less sleep, they're going to be less effective in school, less effective in sports. So, so overall, I think that that's something to try to avoid.